Am I the butthole for bluntly telling the people I work with that no, not everyone in the office can afford to buy a house? My coworkers are usually pretty good to work with. The average salary for them is around 100k plus. I'm their administrative assistant and I make about $32,000. Anyway, some of the things they say are kind of weird. For example, this one woman was shocked that I'd never had any of my clothes tailored before. I think they just really caught up in their own reality you know. Like in their world, everyone is beautiful and skinny and rich with purebred dogs and perfect white teeth. I was helping organize and someone announced they finally bought their first house. The conversation continued on to them kind of being rude and saying like I don't get why people think no one can afford to buy a house, it's not hard? And someone was like yeah I can't imagine being in my 30s and still renting, I'd feel like such a failure and they all agreed. I don't usually get upset about the crap they're talking about but I finally had it and was like I'm 38 and rent, I don't think I'm a failure. One of them was like oh well we weren't talking about you, it's just that all these people always go on and on about how it's impossible to save for a down payment. I was just like yeah, it is pretty hard. It was obvious the whole atmosphere in the room changed so I was like anyway, got up, and left to the main office to get back to work. Later on one of the other women in the office came up and was like hey I'm sorry about earlier I didn't mean to offend you. It got kind of awkward in there. I said yeah, it was pretty awkward listening to them talk about how they'd feel like a failure if they were in my shoes. She said that's not what she meant, she actually meant that it felt like I was trying to call attention to the wage gap like it was their fault, and that if I wanted to better myself they could help me figure out how to apply to schools and work my way up just like they did. I said a kind of half-hearted thanks. It's been weird in the office since then. I know money is one of those no-no topics but it's not like it's a secret that I only make what I make. Am I the butthole? Forgot to add, we don't have HR and this really isn't an HR thing. Not the butthole they are in an echo chamber filled with people just as privileged as them. They were called out on it and, instead of taking this embarrassing lesson to heart, they doubled down and are blaming you. Like, they apologized. But instead of acknowledging that they are uniquely privileged and not everyone can get where they are, they offered to help you get your life together. That's wholly inappropriate. It sounds like it was just one of them that spoke rudely. So I wouldn't blame everyone in the office homeowner club, but I agree with this otherwise. But nobody said, she's right, we're coming from it with a very privileged point of view. As someone who purchased a house young and has been both hardworking but more importantly, lucky, when older adults at the office comment on how other millennials should be responsible like me, I point out all the ways it actually is hard and the privileges that enabled me to do it, rather than pretending it's feasible for everyone. I think it's valuable to push back. This 100%. I've been a homeowner for most of my adult life. I was lucky as hell. I've worked very hard, and moved up. But without an amazingly generous gift to start, I never get where I am now. While I didn't get a financial gift, my parents lived near a big city perfectly suited for my career. Both privilege and luck. So then, they insisted I live at home post undergrad, and save for a down payment instead of rent. It took me four years and I almost went nuts, commuting an hour each way plus night classes, but nobody else on my entry level salary was doing it without significant help. So though it was a cultural thing it was a huge privilege. Same boomers saying more kids should be resourceful like me wanted their kids out the door at 18. Same boomers saying more kids should be resourceful like me wanted their kids out the door at 18. So you've met my mother. Well, I have a sibling? Yeah, more siblings. I've lived on my own since 19 and I'm 28 now. My dad doesn't get how my wife and I can't save for a down payment when it's an accomplishment for us to have 1000 in savings. We're basically paycheck to paycheck, and rent is way higher than a mortgage would be, but we're kind of stuck. Sad thing is, she has a master's and barely makes more than me, and I have an associate's. Wages are crap. Meanwhile, their generation says, well I worked for $6 minimum wage an hour and made it. I bought a house pretty soon. Ignoring that with inflation, we should be at 24 US dollars to keep up with their purchasing power. I'm so sorry. I don't know if you're in the US but I hate that our politicians keep promising to fix this and failing us. Exactly. This right here. 
the generations that benefited from relatively generous social programs went on to undermine those social programs and now can't believe that people working part-time in a summer job, where the pay hasn't kept up with inflation, can't pay for a year of college, where cost has increased many times inflation over the years. Pell Grants used to be enough to cover 80% of tuition and fees. Now you're lucky if it covers 30%. That's not even factoring in other costs like rent etc., which has also far outstripped pay increases etc. We are on the cusp of losing entire generations to wealth inequality. Also that we did it all on our own and our day attitude is bullcrap, too. I know my parents and several of my friends' parents got their first home down payments from their parents. They just love to omit that little part. Especially when they were so bad with their money, they can't pass on the favor to the next generation. Your parents were awesome. Sacrifices always result in greater rewards for your future. An uncomfortable existence is no fun. But you did it anyway. Congratulations on being tenacious, I wish everyone could be. But it's no fun, edit, others have pointed out that some lives just never get ahead regardless of sacrifice. I understand that. It's hard for me to recognize though since I sacrificed and got ahead in life also. I just never quit and I have an attitude that is stubborn beyond belief. I hope the social services I relied on while I struggled helps others as well. Bad luck and bad life choices affect all of us. I guess I managed to dodge a few bullets. Counterpoint to the positivity porn, no one should have to be. There should be a comfortable floor for any citizen to land on in a developed country, where you could survive without worrying about what might happen tomorrow or working absurd hours, commutes are included in that time, or making sacrifices in the name of an uncertain future. It's barbaric. Unless you're born into wealth you have to make absurd sacrifices to frame your life around work, and then you can never risk it because here work gets you garbage health care. And by the recent state of things in Congress that's not changing anytime soon. It's exhausting even secondhand as someone who will be okay but sees that many working class people will not be. Being a citizen of the United States, an ostensibly developed nation, I should be entitled to a warm bed, some small space entirely to myself, water, and healthy food at the very least and more realistically electricity and internet included as well, as that's literally the only way to be a productive citizen in the country now. Maybe something like that capsule hotel in Indeus X, but a bit nicer and provided for free by the government. But that'll never happen without something forcing it, likely violently. I'm sorry to be bleak, but that's just not true. There are plenty of lives of hardship and sacrifice that just lead to more hardship and sacrifice, and plenty of people who die before their sacrifice leads to anything. It's a delicate balance to strike between present and future. My financial gift was the proceeds of a lawsuit after my parents died. So lucky isn't the best terminology but still fortunate financially. But being on my own at 17 was rough. My oldest is 16 now and I see how young I really was. I'm glad your parents encouraged you to stay at home to save. That's our plan for our kids too especially since we live in an expensive area. Also helps that we like our kids a lot in addition to loving them. Or conveniently forgot that boomers often paid a few grand total for a year of college, including books and stuff, even at a prestigious school. By the time I got to college, even a cheap state school could be over 10k a year before counting room and board and books and so on. And with my generation growing up here in college is the way the truth and the life a lot more folks were fighting tooth and nail for scholarships and so on. Yes. It takes like 10x the resourcefulness and hard work to make it all work. Definitely all my fault for not being resourceful, sarcasm. I too have been a homeowner since I was 28. I was able to work a full-time job and a part-time job and lived with my parents rent-free until I purchased my house. They also paid for college. I was also very lucky. I still am, as they still buy me things to help out, a new lawnmower as a birthday gift when my old one was spitting gas at me while mowing, mulch in the spring, mostly because they know I won't because I both don't care and am very lazy, my dad put in a small garden for me to grow some veggies in. Gosh. I wish I had that random free wholesome award to give to your dad planting a veggie garden for you. I was a homeowner at 27. If it wasn't for my fiancé, I'd still be renting as most of my wage went on to rent and bills whereas he lived at home with a very good wage and savings. Just sucks that no matter what country you are in there is no affordable housing. Depends on where you are, but if we're talking major US cities then a six-figure salary is absolutely not down payment money. 
you need generational wealth or a strong dink situation. Or that awesome VA loan, but that brings in its own set of problems. I'm a college grad and was paycheck to paycheck until I met my husband and we bought a house together. He wasn't able to finish college but his military experience helped him land a great, stable job where he out-earned my by at least 2x until COVID hit so now he's the only earner. Buying a house isn't easy. Down payments are a huge stretch and without real wealth or luck or some combination homeownership is being more consolidated. The opposite of this is working your ass off to move up, going to professional school, leaving with 200k in debt and then getting crushed by the Great Recession and still making sub 100k. A ton of people went through that, you really don't know who has what debts, etc. So the people you think are privileged are not always, what they seem, even if you're making less money, for instance. One of my pet peeves about means testing for relief and student loan forgiveness is that it ignores professionals who could and would be doing meaningful public sector work if they didn't have a six-figure debt weighing around their necks. Paying off law school loans may get some panties in a wad, but if it means people can actually choose to be public defenders or work for nonprofits rather than going corporate to keep the lights on, it's worth it. Not the butthole. You called them on their snobbery directly, not rudely, and they were rightly embarrassed. Turning it on you with condescending offers to better yourself was an extra helping of poo. Your co-workers are pretty insensitive. Original poster replies. The better myself thing kind of stung honestly. I know I don't make a lot of money but I'm really comfortable and happy in my life. Not everyone can be a computer programmer software engineer digital marketing goddess. My daddy always said the world needs sandwich makers. The deal is privileged people are usually uncomfortable being faced with it. They like the idea that whatever position they have has is earned and that anyone else could have pulled themselves up by their bootstraps and achieved the same. And the flip side of that is, of course, is that people who haven't earned it aren't unlucky or not afforded the same privilege. No the reason must be that they didn't try hard enough. The privileged were born on third base but think they hit a triple. Given that it is literally impossible to pull oneself up by your bootstraps and the phrasing was at one point meant to mean it's impossible to do, I find the fact that is used the way it is funny, and horrifying at the same time. It definitely shows the disconnect between those that are better off and those that aren't, and tries to disconnect from reality the fact that pretty much anyone who has gotten anywhere has had help along the way. Oh, my god I never even thought about this. The first uses were in American newspapers making fun of politicians who had dumbass policy ideas with no actual plan. But politicians kept getting described this way so much that Americans thought it was a good thing. Lenin was making fun of Americans when he used it for adopting an insult as a badge of honor. I didn't for the longest time either. It's some really great propaganda at work. Another nonsensical phrase is just one bad apple. The whole phrase is that one bad apple rots the whole cart, and that you have to get rid of the bad apple. God that's another one I love slash hate. They use it about police all the time. Well if it's just one bad apple, we know what we have to do to them all then, right? I'll never forget my boss being flabbergasted that I was signing up for Medicaid, you earn enough to qualify? Yeah bro you pay me 25k a year pre-tax, no benefits, in a city with high call, you're damn right I'm getting Medicare. Jeez. Edit, corrected from Medicare to Medicaid, sorry for the confusion. Oh, my god that's so obtuse of him. Yes, you pay an amount that qualifies. I had a boss do the same thing. She was complaining about how she didn't realize how expensive things were until her daughter had recently moved out and she was helping her with her bills and giving her an allowance. My boss thought giving her daughter $800 a month was plenty but then her daughter showed her the monthly bills. So my boss was complaining to me that her daughter couldn't survive on $2,000 a month and shame on the people who paid her daughter such a low and unlivable wage. I reminded her that she only paid me $1,300 a month and I sure as hell didn't have my parents or anyone to fall back on to pay the bills I didn't have money for. She was pretty upset, but how can you seriously be so unfathomably ignorant to everyday economics? Did she pay you more after that? Yay did she give you a raise or just let the conversation die there? She let the conversation die there and then two days later HR put out a company email reminding everyone not to talk about their salaries. I didn't realize you had to earn a certain amount to qualify for Medicare. I thought everyone was eligible once they hit 65, 
or earlier if they had certain health conditions. Medicare is for anyone over 65. The health benefits for low income has different names in different states and you have to make below a certain amount to qualify. Like in California, it's called Medi-California the boss meant like you make so little you qualify? Do you mean Medicaid, then? Yes. In California, it's called medical but Medicaid for the country sorry. Just want to say that I'm an exec assistant making as much as they're making. It took time and lots of job hopping but I love what I do. And yet I don't own a home either. Your dad is right. This isn't a case of you needing to better yourself, our skills are just as valuable as whatever theirs are. They're just embarrassed for getting called out on their pretentiousness. Yeah, as an exec admin who went to one of the best universities in the country and makes a solid income, those people have their heads up their own asses. Many admins have college degrees, we're essentially project managers. Holy crap not the butthole. Home ownership isn't for everyone for a variety of reasons. Especially since 2008. I bought in 2005 because I was pressured into it. Since then I have lived in constant fear that something would break and I wouldn't have enough money to fix it. As an owner, if the roof leaks or the water heater goes up, that's on me. I can't just call the landlord. If I'm stalked by a neighbor, I can't just break a lease and move. Yeah equity is nice. But there's so much much more than equity that factors into it. Given the option, I'd never have bought as early as I did. It wasn't smart. You do you Han. If owning isn't for you then I applaud your willingness to say it, no matter. What your co-workers say. Excellent post. Not everyone has the same homeownership dream. I worked as a respiratory therapist for a decade but moved into public health at the beginning of the pandemic and now I'm 100% remote and will be even after COVID-19 isn't a daily concern. My dream is to buy a badass RV and travel around. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to be the first to know about Red Rabbit Reader's new videos. If you like our videos, please like them on YouTube and share them with your friends. We welcome your comments below. Press to start another of our videos.